It's curvy. It's got a nice curve. Curves. Eric and Eric here, Moski Homebrew, and today we got a product review on the bowl bottle filler. Coming up next. bottle filler. It is a bottle filler. It's a unique bottle filler actually. Yeah, it's a counter pressure bottle filler. So Bull sent us this bottle filler to review and so we're gonna do a video on it and how it works and tell you, give you our feedback on how it works. We have two other bottle fillers. We have the Blickman beer gun is what you have mm -hmm. and I have a kind of basic counter pressure bottle filler with a rubber stopper or silicone stopper on top of it and they both have unique pros and cons. Yeah. <laughs> so we're real interested to jump into the bowl bottle filler. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is actually mount it to my keyser. So we're gonna go over the tools needed for that and then we're going to mount it. So the tools you're gonna need? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the first thing you're gonna need is a drill with a one inch wood bit. Uh, we've got some various connectors here for the gas and beer line going into the, the bottle filler. We're gonna need the speed square, a pen, some uh, extra worm clamps, and we've got a screwdriver to work with the worm clamps on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, then we, we also need tubing. Yep. And this tubing is a little bit different than anything else that we've had. This is a quarter inch. Usually our beer line is 3 16 yep. or our gas line is 5 16 five, Yeah, 5 16 I think. Yes. It's a little bit larger. So this uses a quarter inch, I believe, for all three connections. That would be the beer line going into the bottle filler, the gas line going into the bottle filler, and then you also have a drain line that goes to a bucket or kind of dis disposed beer foam bucket. Yeah, so this, this thing is kind of different in the fact you need a drain line. Like, cause I don't know if you need one on the other one you've had, the well, counter pressure. Had, counter did pressure it? does have a drain line. Oh, it did? Okay. So I've just used the Blickman beer gun and that didn't have any drain line because you didn't necessarily need one because right. it sealed it. Anyway, so the design of this, uh, basically the way it works is you have a um, beer shank, just like a regular beer faucet or a, you know, a tap. Um, this goes into your kegerator or keyser. Um, it fits on, the <laughs> fits on the same kind of nut and then you have a, what would you call this? Uh, beer. beer line barb. adapter. Yeah, it's a basically a barb um, that will fit onto the back of this, or the back of your shank, and then that's where the beer line goes. Uh, you have two lines in the back for a CO2 and a drain line, and then you have this mechanism on the front, which will lock in a beer bottle to seal off. Uh, I guess counter pressure seal. Yeah. I mean, I'm not so allowed to the, say that. And then the one, so yours doesn't have a, isn't necessarily a, your Blickman beer gun is not necessarily a counter pressure no, filler. Mine is a counter pressure filler. And the issue with using mine is I have to push down on the top of it to make sure that the silicone stopper seals the top of the bottle while we fill it. So that, this kind of defeats the purpose, I mean like kind of solves that issue is that it will basically push the bottle up into the seal yep. and create a good seal. Yep. We will leave a link in the description below where you can buy mm -hmm. this bottle. Anyway, you can look them up on Amazon, they're on Amazon. My keys are, I'm actually just going to drill the, uh, the hole for the shank. We're gonna use our one inch Forstner or wood drill bit. Uh, for the shank. I'm not going to drill the other two holes because I don't know how I'm going to leave, if I'm going to leave this on there for a long time, uh, or maybe I might be wanting to add another tap. So I'm just going to run two lines against the wall of the keyser um, and not drill those through inside of the fridge. Yeah, you should have plenty of clearance if you want to do the same thing because it's not, the shank is long enough where you could bend the tubes down and it's not going to pinch anything. Yep. So. The two connectors we're going to use for the beer is going to be obviously a quick disconnect mm -hmm. and I'm also going to use a quick disconnect for the air side. So both of my lines do, uh, being used for this uh, are going to be really short actually. Yeah. So like your beer gun has a very long beer line when it came yeah. with mm -hmm. because yep. you need to equal the pressure of your keg when you're filling mm -hmm. so it doesn't foam. Uh, and then this way, since it's counter pressure, 
I don't necessarily need all that. Let's get to drilling. Yeah, let's mount it. Let's fix it. We measured the locations of our other tap handles and marked where we we're going to drill for the new faucet. Drilled our one inch hole through it. And now we're going to install the new faucet using the shank and screw. And then uh, just mount another one or two more. Yeah, so we're going to add our barb onto the back of the bottle filler so we can get our beer inside. So now that we've got the hose barb on the back of that, we're going to add our beer line to the barb and then add our connector for a quick disconnect. It always helps if you put the worm clamp on the hose first. So this line just needs to be long enough to get to any keg in here. Have the beer line cut. We can add our next worm clamp and quick disconnect onto the line. Tighten the worm clamp down. So there's our beer inlet. We can go to any of the kegs that we have in here. So the next part we're going to hook up is going to be the line for the ingoing CO2. This will allow us to flush out the bottles before we actually start putting beer into them and will help prevent oxidation as we fill. Probably, just saying, probably should have put these on before we mounted this, <laughs> but Eric and I love to do things the harder way. Yep. If it's not hard, it's not worth doing. <laughs> That's Eric's favorite saying. Oh yeah, so there's plenty of room to 90 this down. And then what we're going to do is just be adding our kind of male end of a gas line post. And I can use whatever I have in the keyser. I've got three in there right now. So I can just connect them up to this. One for flushing out. And then another one in there for pushing the beer into the bottle. All right, so that's gonna be our air fill. Now this is just going to, we're gonna wrap it probably in there. This will allow us to essentially take one off of a current keg if we need it, put it right up, and then... Yeah, there you go. One, make the horn sound again. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a train coming! It sounds like a tugboat. So the last oh. line that we need to hook up actually is just our drain, which is over here. And this line's actually just gonna hang down uh, for when we're filling. We'll put it in a bucket in case we overfill a bottle or just get some foam because of temperature differences. Yeah. Work it. That's probably good. Because it'll be in a bucket. It's gonna curl up and then shoot all over my pants. <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> that was actually really easy. Yeah, let's do it. So now that it's mounted, we're gonna show you how easy it's going to be moving forward to bottle a beer that's already in Keezer. So we've already got our airline hooked up. To one of these all we got to do is figure out which beer we want do you want a cider do you want a ipa or do you want a new england ipa well let's say we want the cider we're gonna pull the beer line pull the beer line off find the beer line that you want to put it on put it on there so far so good then since we already got our air line hooked up or a co2 line hooked up we can close the keyser so we got our clean bottle sanitized bottle all right we're gonna hook it up right through here there's like a rubber gasket fits around the neck of the bottle we're gonna twist this and that's gonna lock it in push it against this o-ring that's up here that's gonna seal it so then we're gonna purge it with co2 all right then you can use this valve to let out you know, whatever oxygen's left in the bottle after you're purging the CO2. What I like to do, and then purge it again, that puts pressure in the bottle. Then pull this, 
That's gonna let the beer come out and then slowly let this, turn this, uh, I guess, nut. And that's gonna let the, what we have right now, a cider, fill the bottle. So the, the liquid's actually filling on the, uh, the outsides of the bottle. That's also gonna prevent a lot of foam from uh, forming in the bottle. Once we get about halfway up the neck, we're gonna shut the main tap off. You could get a little bit of foam. Um, you're probably gonna get a little foam uh, once you let this nut, release this nut uh, a little bit. I like to hit it with another thing of CO2 real quick, just to blanket it on top. You can close it or you can leave it open. I like to leave it open, that lets some of the pressure out. Undo the bottle. Then we're gonna cap it real quick. This should cap should be in sanitizer, but then you have your bottled cider, and you can see inside the bottle. I don't know if you can get that, but that's uh, nicely carbonated. It's got a you know good head on it. That'll go away over time, but pretty good. Really easy. So that's how easy it is to fill these bottles now. My setup is a little bit different than Eric's. Uh, let me show you, you know, how I set mine up real quick. Right here, I have the bottle filler, which I mounted to basically a piece of wood that I mounted to the rack that I have um, a lot of my brewing supplies on. It's right next to my kegerator. It's easy for me to fill bottles, whatever I want. So all these lines I actually have running um, straight through this piece. So, I mean, if this could be a setup, where you guys would uh, drill a normal hole for like a normal shank for a beer faucet. Um, and then you could drill two small holes uh, that would bring the, uh, the drain line and the gas line into your kegerator if you wanna do it that way. Um, this way, I didn't have to drill three holes. That way I could, you know, still have a bottle filler, but I wasn't really, uh, ruining the, the collar on my kegerator. I wasn't really putting more holes uh, than I wanted to in it. So this is the way I chose to do it. Uh, I have a gas line that runs to a dual regulator and I have that set to 11 PSI, or I think it's t maybe 12. It's whatever serving pressure I have my kegerator set at, which I believe is 12. So the beer line runs and it's just connected to this uh, quarter inch tubing. Um, then I have a, a piece here. Um, this is basically a ball lock uh, that will fit onto any of my faucets. So I can just unscrew, um, I can just unscrew this here. And then this will screw onto there, um, which allows me to tap into any of these faucets here and fill a bottle. So that's like the quickest way and the easiest way I thought of to do it. Um, but like I said, that's just my quick setup. I also have a bottle or, or a capper right there, just so when I'm done bottling, I can just cap right away. Uh, I got my caps in the corner there, but um, this is just an alternative to putting it into your kegerator. That way you don't have to put as many holes in your collar. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure to leave a comment below if you guys have any questions. It's a pretty simple process to put this thing into a kegerator or mount it to anything, really. You just gotta mount, cut, or drill some holes. Uh, if you're mounting into a kegerator, you're probably gonna, you'd be okay with just putting the lines down like we showed you guys in the video. So there's not a whole lot to it. You can always take it off, put another faucet in there. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. Like this video. Subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you guys next time. Mosky Homebrew. Cheers, guys.